What is going on, All Terrain Nation? Whether it be two-wheel drive, four-wheel drive, it does not matter what you drive because this is your All Terrain Nation, and I'm your host, David Boyd, alongside co-host, young Daniel Groders. What is up, Danny? What up, Dave? Good to be on tonight. Happy I could slide in your uh, your VMs. I always love it when you slide my DMs, sir. Um, no, VM. It's like a video message, you know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. Okay, okay. You're not, you got to be hip with the kids, dude. I'm I, I'm so not that guy, man. I'm not the hip guy that's gonna know what you're talking about. So. I don't know. I just I, I just made that up right now. I don't even know if that's a thing. <laughs> just whatever. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter at all. Sliding all up in your VM. That's right. So tonight we have a little technical difficulties, but we're working through it. Danny has like brought out the second cam. This is like we're yeah. we're going all out for classic. you guys tonight. But, classic uh, show. But it's it's a classic Dave and Danny thing. But uh. First off, I want to say, uh, Dan, it's uh, it's been a minute, man, and uh, we appreciate you coming on here. Yeah, stoked to be here, dude. Um, I missed the live lightning. Um, I did hop in afterwards and look at and check it all, check all the things out. Um, so that was cool, uh, you know. But uh, yeah, it's been a, it's been a hot minute since I was on the show. Well, you guys know the drill. If you guys would go through and uh, smash that like button if you like the the fun stuff that me and Danny talk about, and uh, you know, share it to your favorite your favorite place as I'm about to because I forgot to share <laughs> share the link out, Dan. So, Dan, fill us in on what's going on with you before we break into the show while I while I uh, fudge my way through this. Yeah, not uh, not too much. Um, I got the transmission for my race truck. Um, hopefully that's going to be going in next week. Um, so changing over to a manual for the race truck, um, which, which you didn't want to do if initially, I... right? Yeah, it's, it's a lot, it's a lot, it's a bit much for off-road driving, having all the extra, I mean, you, you want two hands on the wheel, staring straight and just driving and then, you know, shifting once or twice with manual, um, just cause it's a lot less work, um, and it, it's it's pretty hard on manual transmissions as well, um, but uh, I'm pretty confident with what I got. I got a nice uh, Jim Wolf um, racing flywheel and clutch going in, and uh, yeah, got, got a good used transmission. There was only like seventy thousand miles on it from a 2017 Frontier. Got a smoking deal on that. Um, got a got a clutch pedal. Um, so most of it's going to be stock stuff too. Um, from what I understand, it's you know it holds up pretty good and whatnot. So I'm pretty pretty stoked to to get that in. Um, we'll see, you know, we'll see what what comes with that. Um, but uh, well, does does that something that maybe you go right into uh, rebuilding, having rebuilt before you uh, get too uh, crazy with it? Not really. They're they're a really stout transmission. Um, I I think if I was to go with some like if I'm gonna eventually i'd like to go with the turbo 400 um and that way you know if i ever end up putting a v8 in it or something like that i can just swap over to that that's kind of like the industry standard for a uh, good bulletproof um transmission you know a built turbo 300 those with built right those can withstand you know five to nine hundred horsepower depending on how it's built right um so those are usually it's like a three speed you know manual re reverse gearbox kind of a thing or automatic well manual gearbox but not without it or without a clutch you know uh the nice thing is though that it's gonna with the manual um trans uh, i'll be able to get a little bit more horsepower to, down to the wheels um because you're not losing that um that 30 percent of the torque converter or you know 25 depending on what what you're running or whatever so it will be nice to be able to have that little extra power in there to to give it that get up and go so and i'll actually probably lower the gear on it a little bit just because i know the manual transmissions geared slightly lower than what like a manual transmission or a automatic transmission has right. so and of course if you, if you guys are new to what danny is doing he's got a race a nissan racing xterra that he's built and uh the, the cool thing about it and some unknown things about it danny's been working on this project longer than we probably had a uh a, a total media empire that we have dan but uh yeah i just started it when we when we started our our podcast whatever it was six years ago yeah i think it was yeah something like that and uh but the you you'd went through and geared this thing had it had the rear end geared for an automatic transmission and so there's gonna be a little bit of guessing game there but I think you I, like you said I think you'll be all right with that yeah I'm I'm kind of in un uncharted waters so we'll see how it goes you know it's basically just put something in it see if it works if not you know you move forward that's kind of been the the theme of the build <laughs> you know figuring things out it's you know 
nobody's really racing these for the most part. Um, you know, there I can count on one hand the amount of frontiers and exteras that are that are racing right now. So it's very um, very limited supply of what people have done. Um, so I'm in contact with you know Toyota guys and Ford guys and Nissan guys and stuff like that from all over the country that have been helping me with this build. And of course, it's not cheap to build something like this. You know, it's, mm -hmm. I don't make a million bucks. Um, it's all been side money, and as I get money, I'll put it into it, and then I'll get yelled at my wife, and then I have to lay off for a couple weeks. So it's uh, <laughs> but it's 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 super fun. I've learned so much, and that's kind of why I wanted to build it. Is I wanted to learn about the whole the ins and outs of the whole thing. So, uh, yeah, so it's, it's cool. Well, and speaking of cool, Danny, um, we, uh, I guess we'll get into this show, but first off, I want to say, Hey, hey to everybody, uh, guys, once again, I know, uh, let's see, we got dog breath in the house, Smitty's garage, Jeff Cordetti, uh, Kevin, the classiest MF -er I know, Manet, uh, I'm gone in 60. Yep. What is going on, buddy? Uh, up, man? who else do we got in here? We got anybody else? What's going on, man? If you're new to the show, my name is David Boyd. That is Daniel, the don't F with me Groters. And, um, <laughs> I'm on the East coast. Danny's on the West coast. And, um, it's, you know, we're just, we're just, uh, chilling out. Are you really on the East coast, Dave? Well, I'm somewhat on the East coast. Robert. At East. Robert. Uh, I accidentally, uh, didn't mean to delete your message there. It gave me a warning of something you said, but, uh, you can repost that. Go right for it. Anyways, so, um, anyways, uh, auto journalist, Danny's a racer, so that's our thing. Uh, we tried to, uh, try to mix both worlds. We're both enthusiasts yeah, of, uh, everything, everything in between, right? It's, that's you're, right. you know, you're, you're automotive journalist, um, off-road, you know, vehicle person. I mean, we're, we're both car dudes. Yes, um, and we just, much. you know, we both have interests in different areas, but when it comes down to it, we're both motorheads. That's right, man. That's right. And uh, so speaking of motors or things that lack of motor, let's just get into tonight's first topic. And uh, Danny, I did a broadcast the other night of uh, of uh, the uh, Ford Lightning F-150. And uh, we did a live reveal on that thing with Ford. And uh, I had a blast. I really did. I thought... I thought the presentation that they did was really cool. I liked how they had like on the Ford headquarters that it was just a big freaking monitor, man. I could that was like brilliant how they how they did that. <clears throat> the display, the way they had the vehicles come out and stuff was all really really cool and they brought out some influential people that um you know, that should bring these vehicles out. I know I I I during the show I said that uh you know, most of these people didn't have anything to do with uh actually development of that vehicle, which I stand beh behind. I stand behind my comment that the people that were on that stage, other than going, oh, what are we building? Okay, yeah, we're cool. Like, that's that's where they're at. And and Dave, that's it, it, that's kind of a thing, though. Like, on one hand, I'd like, I would like to personally talk with somebody that developed a vehicle. Mm -hmm. But when you, when it comes to putting somebody in front of a camera, I think, I think, I think Nissan does a touch of disservice to a vehicle when they put these nerds, <laughs> we'll call them just nerds, because he, you know, whether they're like the artistic side of things or they're the and, and God help them if they're the engineers, you know, there's there's like a famous comedian dude that says like, you know, here's here's the emoji for for engineers. And it's just like the, the, the straight eyes and the straight mouth and like this happy, sad, you know, excited or whatever. Right. Um, but engineers uh, in general, I'm going to completely stereotype them. They're not the they're not usually the like exciting type. You know they're 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 kind of nerds and stuff, and that's not good for TV as much. Um, well, Ford had the one lady the that was Ford had one lady that she, that was on stage with him, and she was nervous. She was she was a product engineer of some sort, and she definitely was nervous. But uh, and they, you know you realize at, when I was watching this wasn't Ford's biggest reveal because they had seventy thousand on their live stream, which. I'll take 70,000 on this live stream any day, but for like Bronco, it was like, I forget a million or something. It was ridiculous. Yeah. What they had. But, uh, you know, you were in front of a lot of people there and, uh, it, it can be a little nerve wracking, but, uh, overall though, I did think the presentation was really good. What they did. Yeah, they, they definitely, uh, they definitely, you know, to for, it was definitely Ford standard kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, they, they, you know, they have the budget for that kind of stuff. And I think they're, you know, especially with last year, they came out with a few things. They've definitely fine tuned everything. Um, you know, and and it's kind of personal preference for us as well. You know, if you like or dislike whatever person is presenting, uh, but they had they had some heavy hitters. 
um, and they did a pretty good job. Mike Garcia says they all look nervous. Um, yeah, probably so a little bit. But uh, I, I interesting thing I noticed: none of them had ties on. They all did the loose collar thing. Like they're they're trying to be cool, man. Oh, just, yeah, it's we're... well, it's a, it's truck. You know, we're all a bunch of just workmen here. We you know we just we wanted to develop a truck by us for us. You know, we're all part of the we're all part of the crew these days. You know. <laughs> You weren't. You, they weren't debuting the the new uh, Navigator or something like that. You know, the the it, it's not a it's not a vehicle built for the classy, etc. Right. No, I I agree. I agree on that. Um. Oh, Danny, I I was sexing Danny there. No, all you didn't need to do is drop the mic down a little bit. But uh, we're literally fudging Danny. Danny's mic is doing nothing at the moment. Uh, yeah, I'm other... just trying to look. I'm just trying to look professional. <laughs> <laughs> just get that damn thing out of your face. Um. Overall, though, I I was really impressed with the presentation. Anytime you have Brian Cranston that that does their little, um, you know, their kind of uh, video narration, I thought that was really cool. Uh, but let's get into the meat of this thing. And uh, what is up, Expedition Outfitters, guys? On a scale of one to ten, I I don't want any explanation in the chat. I just want to know one to ten what where your number is on this vehicle. And me and Danny are going to break this down as as you guys post those numbers up there. But so for me. I was looking at it. I wasn't surprised. I mean, we had seen hints of what this thing was going to look like. It wasn't a, a surprise. You know, the day before in Biden's talk about it, there was uh, a picture or a, a actual truck sitting behind him. So it was I posted it on Instagram and other places. It wasn't like, oh, that's what it looks like. Ford had done a real good job of showing the outline of the LED in the front of the grill, which I think is t way too big. I think that LED is just I like the idea of that LED, but but. It doesn't it's too much. It doesn't do any it doesn't fit anything about the vehicle. And and before the show, me and Danny were kind of talking, you know, where we thought about this thing. I think that Ford needed this thing to look like a pickup truck. It it couldn't look like a cyber truck. It couldn't look crazy. They needed Ford has a strong buyer. There's a there's a from I would say twenty on up to eighty. They have a wide range of people they have to appeal to, where Tesla and some of these others are pretty youthful companies so this thing had to look pretty much like an f-150 it had to quack like an f-150 and do all the things f-150s do and um after that you know yeah there you, we knew there was going to be tech in this thing like crazy dan it's it's, it's yeah it's, it's an ev it had to be uh of but uh, of the appearance let's break down the appearance first dan where are you at on this thing i and i especially like the led light bar in the tailgate yeah the, it, it's kind of cool um I think across the hood, it's a little bit more, I don't want to say gimmicky or, but like, you know, it, it says like, this is an electric truck mm -hmm. kind of a thing, mm -hmm. um, which I, I don't think, I think it kind of takes away from the look of the truck to tell you the truth, a, a, a touch. Um, it's a great looking truck. I mean, it's, it's basically the same, you know, F-150 with yeah. a little bit of differences. Um, with a front. But I do think, yeah. And, and in truth, like I, uh, from my understanding, the lower models, the, the, the cheaper models aren't going to get that, um, from what I read. However, um, the interior, that big screen, I mean, that's going to be cool. It's going to be super cool to get in one of those and have that, all that tech and stuff like that. Um, you know, that, that, that that's kind of like that, that nerdy part of everybody that just wants to be in a, in a space shuttle mm -hmm. or some kind of, you know, cockpit with like all the futuristic looking things. So I think I think the high points are that the wheels, of course, you know they they, they the, the wheels are what they are. They're I think they're they're developed to be you know super cooling and all these things, but they're right. hideous in my opinion. I, I will <laughs> um, not disagree on that. It's a pretty standard looking truck, and I think that's kind of I think that's kind of what the you know it's it's the it's the best and worst thing about the truck is it's. It's just a, it's just another F one fifty. I don't know if it's exciting enough, but I think that's part of its appeal. Is they're trying to just um, get this out as as it's basically the same thing as an F one fifty, but it's electric. You know, um, there's a bunch of other things as far as you know what it can do that I think hamper it um, big time. Um, I my personal opinion, we have some sevens, eight sixes, fives, eight um, in the, in the chats. I'm kind of right up there on a six. Um, okay. I'm not like completely over impressed with it. I think they kind of just hit the hit the standards as far as mileage 
a truck like this, I don't, it's not like an EV car that, that's, you know, we're driving around town, you know, a little bit more affluent people that can afford an electric car. Um, I Tesla. So a truck is something that you'd working type on, you know, out in the, out in the range. This thing, and so I think that's going to kill a huge section of its sales. Um, anybody that lives out in the sticks isn't going to want to drive some special, you know, to some special place. You well, know, don't don't go too deep there just yet, Dan. Don't go too. Deep. I know. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I I, I got a lot of thoughts on it. You know, there's <laughs> it's it's a weird it's a weird segment, and Ford is is dabbling in it right now. You know, they're about to dabble in it, and it's the fir- it's going to be the first electric truck though that which is a huge thing well and so, i think they wanted to bring it out in a vanilla way so speaking of that so you know rivian was supposed to be out next month Ju- uh, june is when they pr- were predicting they were going to be out I, everything i'm hearing about rivian is they're still probably four to eight months away from actually getting the truck out i mean i think i think the thing that we don't like to talk about with covid and stuff is is just put a hamper on on their re- release date of that which is to be expected, and I and they're a young company, so I'm not going to dog them like I would some of the bigger uh, companies about that. But um, it's like I said, it it the buyer for this has it has to be all encompassing. It can't be just silly weird. Uh, if I were to give the design on that thing right now, and uh, Danny, did you freeze on me? Oh, there you are. Your your internet's a little choppy there, Dan. Um, but if I'm I'm gonna get, I would give it a a. a a six uh it like you said dan it's it's kind of it's kind of underwhelming but that's kind of probably what they were going for so i think i think i i and to tell you the truth my initial thought was a five but the fact that it's coming out spring next year uh that gave it an extra well, point because it's going to be here it's here let's let's well, let's yeah. let's put <laughs> a pin depending in that. on uh, yeah that that's that's kind of the thing that, that's like the theme of all manufacturers these days is before, if they said it's going to be spring of next year, it's going to be spring of next year. That's just right. what it was. Right. And now we have so many different supply production, um, crazy things that are in the mix. Um, people, you know, especially with the Bronco, like you, you see that getting pushed by a vehicle, which they are just chomping at the bit to put out, but they can't because they need to be able to supply the demand and they can't. Well, Bron- so, Bronco's a unique that's story. Situation. That's- Bronco's unique though, Danny, in the fact that it's a it's a, a composite top. It's a completely designed like something they're not used to producing. So I, you guys know on the channel, I especially my W two F series, like I crap on Ford a lot for Bronco, but I do understand there's like they're working with a brand new manufacturer who built a brand new plant to just build hard tops for that thing. So, and but they're yeah. having they can't get a hundred tops out a day right now. So that's a whole nother topic, but. This Ford should be able to stamp out pretty quick, but I think that they're falling but, into the mistakes that a lot of these guys do. But Dave, this is this is an electric. This... I might be calling Dan on the phone there, uh, but I, Danny, what I'm going to say is I think Ford has fallen into oh, no. a trap of a did lot. We lose of, each other? No, that I said I got you. Um, Ford has fallen in the trap of they they were able to make a uh, somewhat drivable vehicle, but I think when it comes down to production that's where it's going to get a little iffy for ford some of this is uh is pretty new yet oh, well dave i think i think one of the things uh um, margaritas i mean this is oh i'm so I jealous right now ever. one of the things the david i think is um i mean Sorry, Danny, this is going to be a, i think this is going to be similar to the bronco as far as i mean this is a this is their first production EV besides the Mustang, right? Like, yes. I mean, the, is the the Mustang? I can't remember if it's even out. I don't think it's yeah, out. No, it's out now. Yet. No, you can buy it. Is now. it out? Okay. Mm-hmm. So this is this is kind of piggybacking on that. So while you say the Bronco has a you know a fresh new you know they got to make their tops out of composites and whatnot, they're they're getting their batteries. I mean, this is a new deal for them on on a different type of scope as far as um you know the amount of tech that's in it the batteries i'm sure there's a bunch of things that aren't in the regular f-150 that are going in the new one well the biggest... yes they can stamp out the body for it but it you know it's i i think spring is is good i think the the uh, economy and how things are going with covid i think are you know are moving 
forward pretty quickly now. I think we'll probably start getting caught up by the end of the year. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think spring is a, you know, it's it's a it's a good guess. I think there's a good possibility, but it's definitely a big uh, a big stretch for sure. Well, you know, the batteries they're buying the batteries. It's not like Ford had developed this battery system. Yeah. Much yeah. like the charging, you know, they were in their uh, release, like, oh, we have all these charging areas, which they don't. They're leasing space on those char- on on existing charging areas, which is not a dumb idea by any means. I think charging areas don't need to, they do not need to be like uh, owned by the, uh, the the manufacturer. I think it's a lot yeah. like a, a gas stations what what it'll be in twenty years. It you has have, to be. It, they have to be. You have your favorite brand of high test electric. Um, <laughs> but yes, Expedition Outfitters top, they top did buy your electric charging. <laughs> right, but but. Uh, there was some wackiness in this thing that I want to get into was because I pre- well, I didn't predict. I said Ford needed to hit the 400 mile mark for uh, for driving this thing, and why I said that was for one. In the live stream, you can go back and watch it. Uh, I knew that that uh, Tesla was in that range somewhere, but I couldn't remember if it was just the normal win or not. So Tesla, you can get a 300 mile range with their whatever their affordable version of the cyber truck which is as of right now we're going to say that's the competition for this thing uh rivian is a smaller in kind of in between a full-size mid-size truck so I, it's yeah. not really competition but when they came out and they were pushing 300 oh it's going to get 300 miles which was a letdown really and then i started digging deeper and you find out no it doesn't even get 300 miles because the the version that's their contractor version gets 230 miles and that's not epa rated that's ford rated which could change it could be worse or it could be better we don't know just yet um but when you get the thing with uh trucks and guys i work on construction sites all the time this you know i this is going to be my full-time gig but uh, between this and and stuff i other jobs i do like i'm on construction sites all the time i see the hell these guys put trucks through I mean, they the a lot of these guys just they buy trucks to beat the shit out of them. Like they don't, it's it's a tool to them. At no point is this EV truck ever going to be a tool. <coughs> Excuse me. This is not. I know Ford's pitch to the American contractor, like, hey, this is the future, which probably is Dan down the road. And but, I mean, it has some it has some possibilities <coughs> to be. But right. at this point, it's not it's not the tool of a standard F-150. What's up, Rob? With the, with, Sorry, Dan. Go ahead. It's it's not the same tool as as the EcoBoost with the compressor or the um, generator in the back. Right. It's it's not quite the same. I mean, just purely from an infrastructure um, point of view, it's it just isn't it isn't the sharpest tool in the quiver at this point in time. Right. Right. So so if you were to buy, say you were one to be the contractor guy and you wanted to buy kind of an entry level into this at, at what was it, 39,000 or something like that's what they're saying. Um, guys, 230 miles are not going to get – most contractors I know do not live in the damn neighborhood they, they're working in or whatever the construction site they're on at all. Like I know contractors yeah. that drive 100 miles each way to get to a job. So ask, 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 uh, ask expedition outfit or oh, yeah, I know. Expedition outfit yeah. about that. Yeah. yeah. He, he put so many miles on his F-150 and then he ended up, he had a little commuter car there for a while, but, um, yeah, he drove a lot, which on one hand, you're not going to be spending the money on the gas. So yep. if you can make that work, if you're just in a, you know, if you're in a big city doing a lot of construction and you know, you're driving 50 miles to work a day, that might make sense. Maybe you're, maybe you're putting hundred miles on the truck a day that's a lot of miles you know mm-hmm. um so that might be it might be a thing for certain scenarios but it's not going to be and and i'm sure ford understands this it's not going to oh, be yeah. the truck that that the f-150 is it's gonna it's gonna you know it's gonna be its own little segment well and yeah ford ford owns this segment to be honest i mean i mean it, anything i ever see of contractors usually they're in a f-150 a basic white f-150 and going to beating the crap out of that thing but the idea of though that EV is ready for that, I I get their pitch to people that were interested in that, but at no point is this thing even close. I'm say if if this is where they think close is, there's twenty they're twenty years away, because you know they're showing oh you can use a skill solo with this thing this and that, but guess what that all operates off a battery vehicle that the same battery that's got to get you home, 
And so, yes, 230 miles. And, and, and the same battery mined. <laughs> yeah. I was going to say this, the same battery that's mined out of a li- at a lithium, yeah. you know, that, that they're, they're spending massive amounts of diesel uh, to mine that lithium. I mean, from a, from an actual like global warming, eco-friendly, it's not as, a, yeah. a, as, as excitable as it could be. But uh, I mean, even expedition outfitters, 50 miles a day to his job site and back. Yep. You know what I'm saying? That's, Hundred miles, um, and you do so, still pay for that electricity. That's for sure. Well, and if you if you if you say that okay, a um, hundred miles, okay, and then he's got it. There's a lot of idle time on these job sites. Guys want to get in the air condition for a minute or whatever. They uh, they want to sit in that vehicle. Guess what that does? Eats up more battery time, man. So, in a perfect world, two hundred thirty miles. Yes, that sounds like it's doable. But in the practical world, and then you start putting some payload in that thing, and oh, yeah. and exactly. And, and, I know it sounds like I'm crapping on this. I like this truck. I like the idea behind it. I, I love new tech. I like electric tech because it's fast. It's just power on demand. I just don't think that this truck, their pitch to the American buyer, I think they were just slightly skewed at where it was at. But back to the so so back to the 230 miles that the normal F-150 of this will get. They off also said, well, 300 miles. Well, guess what? That 300 miles is uh, that's a big added, added cost to that. And then the next thing they were pitching, Danny, was you remember in Texas, everybody was out of power, and there was a lot of those guys using their their uh, hybrids to power their homes a little bit. I that was ingenious, and that I can guarantee you that wasn't a Ford idea back then, but they took that idea and ran with it. So, well, Cal- California, California, especially in my area, has been. With the winds and the fires, there's been huge problems with power outages, and and you know they're like, oh, we're, we're going to cut power to you know during high winds, we're cutting power so that power lines don't start fires and right. kill everybody. <clears throat> and so it's funny because in in big rural areas, that's that's a thing now apparently, and it's been a thing as far as you know. You see generators down the street at the at the um, at the node boxes, uh, the electrical node boxes. Um, people or the city is putting generators at those things now um and so that's kind of a thing now you know in in you know big rural areas where you know people don't want to lose power and they definitely sold that you know they're like oh it it can power a home for up to three days with your electric truck you know you're like well i i suppose and then you need to crank go crank up your diesel generator your gas generator and charge your truck (laughs) Up or something like that. Well, and, and some of that, you know, they bragged about that feature, but what they didn't tell you was that's a ten thousand dollar addition to make it trickle back into your house. So what what if you read the fine print of this is you have to have their I forget Damn. I forget what the wattage of it was. The so if you normally use their two two thirty or two forty, whatever it is, uh two forty uh charger, this truck takes twenty hours to charge full battery if you get there the ten thousand dollar upcharge it it'll do it and i forget it was eight or ten hours uh yeah, but with, in, with the special with the special home charger they they you know you, it says it can recharge and ever whatever it was i i'm spaced on that it was pretty quick with the with all the special home charger stuff yeah but yeah you're gonna pay if mm-hmm. you want all those accoutrements so so my my point is back to the contractor thing. So you got a 230 mile truck that that's limited. It takes 20 hours to charge that thing back. So you're gone. Most contractors I know are minimum 12 hour days. So oh, yeah. so where's the math doesn't work out for that. And once again, I'm not beating this truck up because I do I do like the truck. I like the idea. I just don't I don't like the fact that I wish they would put a tonneau cover on the back of this thing and just show it for what it is right now. It's a car that can do truck-like things, but it's not really a truck because they're like, oh, it'll tow 10,000 pounds. At 230 miles, take 70% off of that battery, and that's that's the mileage you we'll get. Well, yeah, like Dave, Dave give, them the, give them a reasonable – I mean, take 50, we'll take 50. Let's just say it's 160 miles at okay, yeah. a 10,000-pound towing radius. We'll just let's – let's be fair, Dave. Take fifty percent off that battery life, towing ten thousand pounds. Right, that's a hundred and what was the, what was the range? Two hundred and sixty, two thirty, two thirty. Yep. So one hundred and fifteen miles. Yep. Uh, I mean, I can cruise down to the beach and do some beach camping. 
But that's it, Danny. That two thirty with that particular battery. That's the perfect scenario. That's weather. Uh, it weather affects that. Heat and cold affects that. Oh yeah. Um. Well, Dave, we don't we don't bother with uh, thinking about weather down here. Oh, sorry, sorry, sick. sorry. I'm sorry. So I'm sorry. You live in 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 the butthole of the world where the weather is humid or cold or or there's it changes. You know, there's these weird world changing things, and you're like, I don't know what temperature it's going to be. We just walk out, and it's always beautiful. Hey, you know here. what? You know what? That's though? why I'm broke. You know what? We don't have the homeless problem you have. So, uh, anyway, <laughs> anyways, uh, that's a whole nother. Uh, there's your uh, environmentally friendly thing for California, but uh, but my to that is okay. So yeah, you split that in half, Dan. And then you, oh, I charging my phone on that thing, or I'm charging this. Oh, we're going camping. I'm towing the boat, so we're probably going to use it at, at the at the lake. Guess what? Lakes probably don't have charging stations for this. <laughs> Guess what? If you're yeah. if you're over 200 well, miles away, and you're wanting to go, oh, I'll split the difference and charge it halfway. Guess what? If you're towing a boat or a camper, I've never seen a charging port station that's you can pull a whole thing into a, a, a this, RV. This brings up a, this brings up a good question because let's just say you go camping somewhere with an RV, um, with full hookups, and they have big full hookups mm-hmm, there. Mm-hmm. You may be able to tow three hundred miles, or we'll we'll say let's just say well with the big three hundred mi- three hundred package, you may be able may be able to tow up to three hundred miles. You go, you plug in your trailer, you plug in your truck. Cause there's some big amperage going, uh, mm-hmm. 60, 60 amp, whatever. Um, your truck gets charged up off. The, now you're going to be paying a lot more to go camping because yeah, people yeah. are going to be like, dang, they're pulling some serious voltage out of this place. Um, it won't hit, you know, it, it won't hit as hard in the beginning, but eventually is, you know, more people might be buying these and more pre- people might be hooking up their, their big friggin' 35 foot campers and their truck. And you know, run their AC, charging their truck. Um, it's going to drive those prices up. <laughs> so, I mean, you could you could go somewhere and plug your truck in. At you know, you have a, a double outlet. Right. Well, and and think about this with RVs. Maybe this is a way to change the RV world because you could put you could put solar panels on top of that RV, and it it you get the the heavy duty style like you would put on your home, and you could get some you could get some some take back from from there a little bit but i mean not enough to to really do it justice but is yeah, yeah. you could make an rv too with a, a power a, a power bank with it i mean there's ways to do this and and yeah. we're it's well, we're in a changing world that's going to they're going to solve these problems it's, it's going to change i mean we're going to we're going to run out of lithium pretty soon too um <laughs> no um kevin says that it's a 70 percent degradation when towing yes. um i don't I don't have enough knowledge. Uh, maybe Kevin, Kevin, Kevin's a very smart guy, Kevin Manet. Um, so that's, that would, I mean, that would, that kind of blows my mind. Um, you know, if Kevin knows more than me, that's that, that, that wouldn't be the first time. Um, it's probably 90% of the time. I, I know very little and I just say a lot of words, but, uh, but Kevin, if that's the case, it like, this would be a complete waste of time for anybody that ever thought of towing. Right now, back. I mean, to, what are you going to go an hour away? <laughs> well, and, and to my point is, yes. Um, the um, there's a place for this truck, though. Don't get me wrong, guys. I'm not. I'm not crapping on the idea of an EV pickup truck, but I just what scares me is is people who don't know or understand this tech jump to their dealership. My understanding, they got. 25,000 uh, orders the first night of this thing or reservations, which, you know, Bronco guy, that should make you like feel real happy that you guys we did way more than that. But um, I just don't want to see people that buy these things and then you get them and a week or two later, you're like, well, this isn't practical at all. This is where companies like Nissan with their Leaf and stuff, tr- people need to, if, the, if we're in with EV tech, which I totally love, ease into it. Don't go the hundred thousand dollar pickup truck because Ford's saying ninety thousand for the high end of this truck, which is a lot. That's a lot of money. That's a um, big price tag. Tesla I mean, Tesla is seventy you know. to a hundred thousand uh, dollars. The the Humvee or the Hummer that GMC is trying to do hundred grand starting out, <laughs> and and GMC can't even get you a basic win for like four more years. They they were like, oh no, we can't. Do, we're starting with the high end only. 
we 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 don't talk about Chevys and GMCs on this channel, well, right, Dave? <laughs> well, no, but shit, there's about to be a Silverado. Haters. Silverado pop out too. There's an EV Silverado coming real quick. Um, but Ford seems to be the leader with the big three about getting some of this out before everybody else does. Now, I love this the twelve or thirteen inch screen that they have in this thing. That huge tablet looks yeah. great. The interior. Yes. Of this thing looks very, very clean. Not a lot. You don't need a lot of buttons anymore. All your AC vents and everything will be controlled through that big monitor. Um, I'm sure it drives great. Super quiet. Uh, yeah. Four and four or four is kind of what I think President Biden said when he got to test drive it, which I'm sure he shouldn't have said that, but he just said repeated what Ford told him. Um, <laughs> there's a he lot. Bubbled out something yeah. about that. It was and they said four seconds. It's good. It's good. Uh, good things I, are all the good things. I will say I did. I, I I this isn't real political show by any means, but I like that he got out. He's a car. I will say this: the president is a car guy. He loves vets like crazy. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I I did. You know, is for if you like Trump, whatever your politics are, I don't care right now. It was kind of cool to see our president out there, like. Trying some of this tech now. Whether yeah, he get, remembers you get it, one, you get one point for Motorhead status. Yeah. I, I'm gonna give you a point for that. You know, you may only have one point in my book, or you may have three, whatever it is. But uh, I'll give you a point for that, and and I'll, I'll give you a hat tip. Because you know, here's the thing: is Trump would have never gotten that damn thing, like ever. <laughs> Trump's not getting like, like drive me to the airport. I don't care. <laughs> if it's good but I so so I thought that was kind of cool. Uh, Ford really seems to be humping up to this administration. I'm sure it's for they I know they're pushing hard for more EV credits. Uh and that's, you know, probably that's how it goes and and it is what it is. But so the interior of this thing Dan looked like an F150, you know, it, like I said it quacks like an F150 other than that big monitor in it. So I think it was just cool enough that it's not going to scare everybody away and exactly. I th I think people yeah. that can't afford this are going to buy it. It's a lot like GM and everybody does with Cadillac and their high-end brands. You throw the heavy, expensive tech out there, and eventually the people who can't afford it will get it. But uh, overall, if I have to give the truck right now, I know I gave it about a 6 on styling. I would say probably a 6 on uh, overall practicality, too. Uh, and for, for let's see, I need to say hello to a few people because we had some more. Hold on, hold on, Dave. Right. Classic B. Warren rolling in here strong. Uh, the truck has been for fleets who want an energy efficient vehicle tax credit and guys who want to brag to coworkers how many Keurigs they can plug in at once. <laughs> <laughs> Be warned, dude. I love when you roll in with the, with the hot tanks, dude. Be warned is solid every time. Uh, every time I'm, I'm going to read them. Uh, Be warned is, is one of our guys. Um, yeah. uh, but Man, it gets me chuckling every time. Right, and guys, don't get political in the comments, man, because I will start deleting those because this is not a political show. Uh, but let's see. Uh, Amy, what is going on? Uh, Jeff Cordetti's in the house. Uh, Rob Rule is in the house. Mike Garcia. Hey, uh, real quick, Dave. Blind Man Overland said uh, they, they made a really good point. As far oh, as trucks yeah. go, e-vehicles will not ever work, at least up here in Canada. The cold just sucks the life out of EV everything, um, which was a very, yeah, cold, co extreme cold weather is just the worst possible scenario for battery tech, for, yep. for EV tech. It is not going to take off out there whatsoever. If I was Ford, I wouldn't even bother selling it to places like North Dakota <laughs> and stuff oh, like no. that, you know, yeah. unless special order. I mean, if you want one, you can have one, but there should be a big, long, like, like you know, disclosure uh, for anybody that, that lives in, you know, sub-zero temperatures because those – those trucks, I mean, it's it's worse than diesel. You're gonna have to have like battery warmers and all kinds of wacky stuff in order to keep those things alive. Um, uh, Rockstar Kevin is in there with his frontier questions being asked away. I love that we have our conversation. Then Kevin is like, I need to make Kevin a moderator because he has his own sub. It's like a <laughs> subreddit over there that Kevin has in our chats, and I we're, love that. We're gonna we're we're gonna have a live next Wednesday, and Kevin can uh, he can just sit out there and, <laughs> and hit those home runs for all of us in the chats. While we yammer on here. That's right. And Kevin, do not be sorry about that. I wasn't bitching about anybody in the... I just don't want anybody to just suddenly get political with this show. Um, Danny, where do you rate this truck overall? One through ten? I think I said it was a six. They got an extra point because they're actually coming out with it. It's actually going to... Well, like I said, I think, I think Ford has enough girth 
in their in their in their structural uh, integrity. Well, I mean Bronco, but um, I think that they can pull it off um, quicker than almost anybody else. It, if if an EV truck is going to hit the market, I think Ford would do it first. Yeah, um, I think they have the power. Ford has a lot. I mean, the F one fifty has been the number one selling truck in the United States for, for how many years? You know what? 50 years or something like that. And and it's not by a little bit. It's it's by a massive amount. Whether you call it for fleet and and all the other things, yeah, sure, whatever. But they they win the F1 in, in the in that segment, they win every single year. And if somebody's going to do it, they're going to do it. So, I gave them an extra point for that. Um the 3 the 230 and 300 mile range leaves a lot to be desired. I think they could have put like 180 watt um uh, system in it to, to give it a little bit more, maybe a 400 mile range. I think they should have done that. Rivian was talking about, I, I think that's what they are saying in what they're, what they're going to offer. Maybe it's because it's a smaller truck, et cetera, et cetera. But uh, yeah, I, I'm saying six. It's, it's nothing overly exciting. It is what it is. It's an F-150 that's electric. Um, mm-hmm. I'm not blown away, but it's got some cool stuff. It is, you know, it's, it's an electric truck that, that, will probably do all right in um city and rural areas <clears throat> yeah pretty much pretty much i um uh, yeah i'm once again i like it i know we sound like we're beating it up a little bit but uh i just think the tech for that type of vehicle is just not there yet i mean um can you imagine your the way we're going or the way the world would like us to be like all your heavy duty construction equipment like your track hose and bulldozers and all that could you imagine them pushing that for ev right now oh, i love track hose Oh, who doesn't love a track hose? Love um, me some track hose. But anyway, so Dan, I Dan doesn't <laughs> even know about this. So, oh, I got some merchant, and uh, you can see the back, the back of it. But Dan gave me that shit. We, I, I, like I a black sweatshirt. I talked to Dan about this a while back, and Danny always craps on my shirt ideas. And um, if you guys Wait, are well, grab- first, first Dave. The fact that you held up a black sweatshirt, I'm really it's excited not a, it's right not now. It's a sweatshirt, it's a t-shirt. Or a t-shirt. First, it's black, which yeah. I'm really excited about so far. Um, I'm going to guess that, that the, the lettering and or whatever it is, uh, is going to be bright and, and pop. Uh, but the fact that it's black, what, I don't care what okay. the lettering is. Okay, what color do you I'm think excited. the lettering is? I... I could care less. The fact that it's a black shirt, I'm really oh. stoked. And somebody asked me what I, I'm drinking. Very smart. This is a classy show. So tonight I am drinking the uh, um, Jack Daniels 27. So hundred dollars a bottle. Speaking of drinking, well uh, Dave, Dave, why don't you debut your fresh new merch while I grab myself a drink? Dude, you grab that drink. So everybody's bugging about uh, Dave. You need you need merch. You need merch and all that. And and I've we've done it with the Nissan stuff in the past. And um, We'll test the waters here. So first off, Dan, it's not. There's nothing super. Like I, I can't say not original about this, but it's nothing. It, it, the timing of this shirt couldn't be perfect. What HBO Max is about to have on their uh, channel here coming up, because if you're a child of the '90s or uh, late '90s, early 2000s, there's a group of people. I'm getting excited. Who were all friends. That uh, hung out in Chicago. And Danny, you've seen this before because you gave me shit about this. But um, let's see. So here is. Let's see it. (laughs) (laughs) I love it, Danny. This is, for for those of you that don't know, Dave is the most classic uh, tagline (laughs) ripoff guy I've ever met in my life. Um, Obviously, that's a a spinoff of uh, of Friends. Ah, oh, boy, Dave. Ah, oh. well, Dan. From a so, guy whose wife was a Friends fanatic while we were dating, and, and I'm married sending, I'm sending your wife one of these because she'll love it, and you won't. You, you should, you should, you should. All right, so Jamie, if I know you're not listening, but uh, I will be sure to. Uh, to she doesn't she care put. about my truck stuff. I know, but she might care about if it looked like Friends. What if you're? What if you put on the side, you change all your logos to whatever you're calling the truck, whatever in Friends font. You gotta give her. You gotta give her something there, Danny. I mean, you gotta halfway this man. All right, man. I'm I'm already over it. <laughs> I, I'm I'm just so proud of you that the shirt isn't bright yellow 
and the uh, the lettering isn't neon orange. I'm I'm just really proud of you, well, Dave. There's lots of colors in this, Dan. It's hard to see. I know the camera doesn't do it justice. Let's I know see. there's a lot of colors, but, but Dave, the red, fact that the shirt isn't blue, neon neon green. Yellow, I'm just really proud of you. And white. So, anyways, so I'll have these up. I'll have these up on um on the website in the next couple of days. And uh, you want to order them that way, and uh, we'll do it. And I'm sure we'll talk about it more. But I've got I've got plans for other things, guys. But my my current graphic designer is at his wits' end with just he he doesn't have a lot of time for for design. So and and I went to school for graphic design, but I just I don't have time to put a lot of thought into this stuff anymore. So that's where we're at with the first official Altering Nation T-shirt. Now I'm sure I'll do something. This shirt was done way before even the logo, the new logo, was out. So I'm sure I'll do something with the new logo uh, down the road. Um, anyway, so Danny, I picked up something fun last week, and I did a video on it, and uh, it's actually done pretty well for a Jeep video on uh, uh, I thought it was Chicago, Kevin. I, you could be right; it could be New York. But it's, I, it's I, New York. I, I did a video of the new Jeep, Danny, and then I got a, I, I've had a lot of people hit me up and be like, Dave, Jeep, really? Why, why are you not buying a Bronco? First off, there'll still be a Bronco in the driveway. I had to look at this as a business decision right now, and I needed a, for one, I needed another vehicle. I sold off everything I had in prep of Bronco, and then Ford keeps delaying Bronco, and it's just like, damn it, man, I, eventually I'll, I will get, um, Oh, Brett, Dave, do you have the right shoes for that T-shirt? Oh, I'm sure. I'm sure he's got three or four pairs of ridiculous I have, shoes to I match it. I literally have three pairs of shoes by Adidas right here that I just. All right, let Dave. Let, let's Anyways, just focus. Let's this just isn't. Focus. This no, is. We don't need to talk about shoes. It's not Adidas Nation. But so Dave, Dave, you you bought a Jeep, and I want to weigh in on this well, because but, I haven't yet. But Danny. I know you have just hold hold tight, but I need everybody to know that yes, a Bronco will be in the driveway as soon as uh, I get that confirmation and and wait the twenty months that it takes to build one of these things. It seems like, um, but at, in the meantime, it's summer. I wanted something Bronco like like in the driveway. My daughter's ten; she loves she loves the doors off, the tops off the trucks and stuff. So. I wanted to get something for the meantime, and I will say I picked a I picked a Gladiator because out of the two, if I had to do a Wrangler or Gladiator, I just thought Gladiator is just a little different. Seems I like quirky vehicles, uh, and I'll be honest, since the Titan left, Danny, I didn't realize how much I missed having a truck bed. Yeah, that happens. That happens big time. Yeah, every time you go to oh, I'm just gonna go pick this up at the store. Well, damn it, now I gotta go see my parents and borrow my dad's truck, or like you just do not realize. Yeah how quickly you need a truck. So that was part of the reason why I picked up the truck bed. Uh, Kevin or Kelly still to this day, I was talking to her about it on the way to pick my daughter up. And I said, what are the kind of the things that stand out about this vehicle that you do not like? And she's like, I still think it's ugly. The The beds. Yes. The bed is a little too long looking. I, I totally agree. But, but I will say this uh, Bronco guy, you're going to be pissed off when I have them next to each other because there's things I've noticed that Ford took the highlights, Danny, of of that style and pulled like the big things that stood out. But there's a lot of little details that the Bronco did not get that Jeep has right now. But we'll go on that. There'll be videos about that down the road. So, Danny, give me your shit because I know you're very anti Jeep. And uh, well, it. It, it was funny because right before Dave bought the Bronco, I was I saw a vehicle that was maroon, and I thought to myself, I just do not like maroon vehicles at all one first off i it just this is personal preference people i this is right before dave sent me pictures because i got the i got the you know i got the lowdown before everybody else and i was like i don't like maroon at all i just don't like it then and and for for those of you that have that have seen or, or some of the shows i'm not a jeep fan at all i i do not like their their quality of building i don't like jeeps i don't like I, I just don't like them for a myriad of reasons um, that that I may have talked about before or not. <clears throat> not a big fan for most for for the most part. There there's a few in the history that there's some really good stuff out there from Jeep, but at this at the same time, I'm just like meh, no thanks. So Dave sends me a maroon Jeep truck, um, and it's the Willys, um, and I just thought to myself like. 
I'm so glad that Dave isn't like buying this as like, oh yeah, this is the truck. And that's my only solace, Dave, is because if you were buying that as like, this is my new supreme off-roader, oh, I'm going to be the best off-roader of all off-roaders, I probably would have, I probably wouldn't have talked to you anymore. But I wow. know you, Dave. Wow. And that... I know that... That part of the <laughs> that was going to end our our long term friendship was a, it would have ended deep... <laughs> as as a real motorhead I think I I thought more of you but I know that it like I will say that if you're going to be getting you're going to be getting a Bronco I think that you need to have it, it, it's a it's a great decision for the channel um, you do need to have the Jeep experience to be able to say okay the Bronco got this right or wrong and know the differences between the two um i i watched your video very interesting um i was very curious about the back seats seemed like it sat really straight up and down i mean that's kind of typical for any back seat of a truck um i was kind of curious about how comfortable that really is for like a, a grown adult um if it's just completely the same um i i'm I, i'm more curious from a a standpoint of all around is it is it as as good as as everybody says it is um i'd really like to see you um kind of mob it hard at a, at a decent pace just because um the the rear suspension i'm curious how good that is um i don't know if you have much to do that in maybe maybe when we go to win um we can find some area to to let me bomb around in a little bit i don't know the last I, time I last time you questions. bombed around in one of my vehicles like the damn hub about fell out of it. I lost my wallet on the trail, and like it was a it was a it very bad experience going off roading the den. Uh, it doesn't count. That vehicle was beat to hell before I got into it. For the record, and those things were known for just their terrible steering. And just because the steering broke doesn't mean that it was my fault. It was just because it had terrible steering. Oh, it was just circumstance. Um, so no, the de- the back of the seat of that thing actually is pretty comfortable, man. I I. I w- I'm definitely went into this thing going like like you were saying, Danny. This was a business decision. I needed to know before Bronco comes here. It's hard. I mean, I've had Jeeps. I had old YJs and stuff, but nothing current. And it was and it was complete trash. Oh yeah, that YJ was a hunk of shit. Don't get me <laughs> wrong. Uh, but that being said, I needed an A and a B. I really did. And and the cool thing about Gladiator, it's basically a Wrangler. I mean, other with a Wrangler with a bed. So the interior is all the same. So it's not like I'm going into a four door uh, SUV that's completely different than a truck. Like it, it, they're very similar. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna. I've got some uh, first impressions video that I'm gonna film tomorrow and hopefully have up Monday or Tuesday. Uh, the back seat, though, Danny. I I literally, when you seen me get in it, that's the first time I ever got in the back seat of that in that video. So. Yeah. I had zero problem with it. Lots of room. I will say that lots of room in that thing, which is nice. Um, I'm kind of I'm kind of curious about what your quibbles are on it. Like, what are the what are the worst part? Like, I I would like to see you say, you know, what what are the worst parts that you find about it, and you know, highs and lows of it. You know, what are the best parts that you like about I, it? I, because I, not, I'm not gonna lie, Dave. I I like the dash, like the utilitarian. Mm-hmm. Part of it, I I don't believe in the in the quality of build for Jeeps. I just don't believe in them. I I have a long way to go in order to trust the quality of build for a lot of the whether it's interior, you know, whether it's a window regulator, just mm, all, all that right. little dumb stuff. Um, I think you know solid axle truck. I think it has some really stout stuff underneath it, especially in the Rubicon. They're they're pretty stout trucks. Well, Don't so, get me wrong, so the, I, think, I have a lot of problem with those kind of things. The cool thing with the Gladiator is it's Dana 44 front and rear always. The, any of them yeah. Dana front. Yeah. So you're yeah. not getting the, the weaker. The new axles are a little bit thicker, I think. Yeah, versus well. a Wrangler, you're getting a Dana 30, uh, which is less desirable. But uh, I I don't want to give all the milk away for free here, buddy. Like, I've got no, videos no, no. coming I, I, on it. I'm, I'm saying put that in your video. I, I oh, want yeah, to yeah. know what your biggest problems are. Well, my um, biggest. Put that in your video because you're <clears throat> still experiencing it. You're yeah. going to. That's the thing. You're going to get quibbles about even my Frontier. I got I got tons of things about that. Um, You know, whatever vehicle you drive, eventually you go, ah, I don't like this about it, you know. Um, So I'm kind of curious because I, you know, I, I don't feel like we get enough honest opinions on these vehicles, well, um, and especially that's... from from <clears throat> people like you. Well, and that's so that's the thing too that's going to be cool about this is I'm not a Jeep guy. 
Like I'm, you guys, a lot of you know me for the Nissan world, but uh, I've what's up, Frank? I'm I'm coming into this truck as like I'll tell you the bed's too long of this thing. It's it's not that appealing. But having how, a truck bed, how is big is appealing. the bed? It's a five foot bed, so you can flip the tailgate it's down. It's too you, big. No, it just looks too long on the on oh, the vehicle. Oh itself. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, um, I get it. I get it. So definitely, I'm. I, the cool thing too is I'm not one of these YouTube guys that are going into this going, I you know I'm already a Jeep guy. I'm not a Jeep guy. I the, I like that you could take the doors off. That's fun. I've done that. Uh, the freedom. I will say the having the freedom tops up up the above the drivers. That's super nice to pop those off real quick, and that is really really nice. Um, now Dan Dan SoCal guy, you guys have what's called sun out there. And I guess it gets a little warm for you, so that's probably not as appealing. I, I, I still, I don't, I, I don't know. Me, me personally, I like, I don't even like the sunroof open. So I know, which is I weird. Know. Like, if I want to be out in the sun and, and hanging out, I, I pull over and I pull the ice chest out and I drink beer. <laughs> uh, I don't, I don't need, I don't need to be in, like. It's basically like a like a hard dude's convertible. Right. Right. Uh, you said hard, um, but. I so tomorrow so tomorrow my plan is I'm taking the top off completely. I I'm going to a car show in it so uh I'm going to take the top off completely. Oh well. I will say the 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 first thing I do not like about it year one a gladiator they put BFG uh, KM3s on it. <clears throat> I got Firestone Destination MTs. Great. It's a nice tire, don't get me wrong, but do you a know what they MTs? did? MTs. Yeah. Oh. So the the first thing they did bad I've got a maroon vehicle, which looks great. It's blacked out. All the badging's blacked out. looks great. They put white lettering on the outside. I It makes zero sense to me. You blacked Circa out everything. Yeah, you blacked out everything, and then you put the white lettering on it. So I will say, after my initial reviews on this thing, I'm going right to the tire shop, and we're going to reverse that because it just looks horrible to me. Um, It's got a 32-inch tire on it, Dan, which is not bad. I probably, if, depending on when I find out about my Jeep, I may put new tires on it. I may not. It, it just depends on how long the Bronco takes to get here. Um, but it's it's the Willys edition, so you get a limited slip diff. So you don't have lockers, but you do have a limited slip diff. Um, once again, this type of vehicle, for what I want it for, I'm not going to, uh, I'm not going to, be warned, dude. Hey. You're banned. Yeah, be warned. Uh, what? No, hold on, Dave. Be warned. He's got the best quips. So, like, he has two check marks. So he's got the best quips in the chat, but he's got a white letter guy. So they cancel each other out. We're gonna let him stay, but don't get another check mark. On, I'm not, don't let me find another check mark on you. Be warned. Danny. Uh, Danny can quick. only hold protect on, you for so long. Be warned. Terrence Mooney said he's here in the 805. Terrence, I'm in the 805, bro. Grab a beer. There you go. We, we're already grabbing also, beers. Also, Kevin Manet, sunroof always closed. It's a thing. And and he's a Southern California guy, too. Right. Uh, is Kevin in the 805 as well? Or is that a different area? Uh, he's probably in the 310? I don't know. He, he's close enough. Well, you know, Kevin, Danny, Kevin was 20 minutes from me and didn't even reach out and say hi. I well, heart- that's that's because you're a complete jabroni, Dave. Well, nobody I've, actually wants to talk. To I was I was heartbroken. <laughs> I really was. Uh, let's see. Uh, white letters out for life. Be warned, though. I can only protect you so, or Danny can only protect you so long with those kind of comments. I mean, those are yeah, those you are. Better, you better keep you better keep the witty quips, be warned, because <laughs> if not, you're out. You're out. Uh, let's see. We got a few more people popping in. Mark, uh, Mark Leslie. What do you think of the lightning? Uh, white letters suck. White walls are uh, the way to go. Um, Mark, uh, if you'll rewind this about 40 minutes ago, we, I, we, I, and I'm not being an asshole. First we, half of the show. Yeah. We literally <laughs> spent 40 minutes on that. So, uh, but I, I give it a six overall, Danny. What did you, I think you gave it a six or so too. I gave it a six as well. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Basically just because it's, it's nothing overly exciting. T- uh, real quick, Terrence Moon, I'm over in Moore Park. He's literally like 15 minutes away. That's freaking awesome, dude. Terrence Moon. What's up? My, my local bro. Right. I'm in the 615, boys, so that's all I know. Um, <clears throat> Nobody lives there. Uh, excuse me. I think of, if you're a country music star, you live in my area code. Trust me. Yeah, sure, bud. Uh, yeah, listen listen to this guy. 
if you're anybody worth anything. You live a Danny, fun, your state, they're leaving your state in droves. Like, they can't get out of your state fast enough. And I've told you, <laughs> I told perfect. you like four years ago. I was like, Dan, you get out of that state. And you're like, dude, it's too nice here. I'm like, okay. And where you live, I'm sure that you don't have uh, the five miles of homeless population. Uh, you don't have a beach there. Yeah, really. that's true. Yeah, we don't we don't let those we don't let those riffraff come up north north to where I'm at. Well, anyhow, but back to Jeep. So, um, I I really am going at this thing with eyes wide open. I'm I'm not I'm not a fanboy. Uh, I'm an off-road guy, so that is appealing to me. Somebody asked me earlier, hey, when are you going to take that off-road? When I get the chance, uh, pro- honestly, it may not be till when. I, my my summer schedule right now is so packed. Um, so, And if you don't know what when is, wheeling enthusiast of Nissan trucks, which is going to be weird that I have a Jeep there, but uh, it's my final I really, year. I really, hope to, I really hope to get in and, and, and maybe give it just a, just a general drive around, maybe on, you know, yeah. maybe on, what, what's that, what's that, Trail 24 or whatever that, that oh. maybe just get in it and, and give it, um, you know, just, just get a little bit of an experience on it because I think most of my Jeep hatred is not from in a truck. It's from so many different stories from different people. Well, and there um, is so, a... There's a douchebag community that goes along with some of that. Let's be honest. Yeah, I mean, there's there's a ton of really cool Jeep guys that I met. I'm oh, not gonna lie. Like, there there's so many good Jeep guys, but I think because the community is so big that, like, you know, especially loudmouths and stuff like that, um, and 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 people that I've met on the trails that are like, oh, I'm a Jeep dude, and just because you're in, uh, you know, I'm a Nissan guy, but <laughs> uh, you're a Jeep, like they're Jeep dudes, and they they let you, you know, they they say your Nissan can't do stuff, and you're like, well, just just be cool. Dude. Dude. Listen to B. Warren, dude, coming at me hard. I won't accept an insult from a ah! former Juke <laughs> and future cross cab owner. Uh, I haven't bought a cross cab. That was supposed to be for, uh, I was going to buy on the other channel I think we talked about, I was going to buy a cross cab if I could reach a certain amount of Super Chats, which. Uh, dude. Yeah, uh, super, super Chat us. I'll, I'll buy one over on the NMP if I get enough Super Chats. <laughs> And if you don't know, if you like what we do, Danny, me and Danny used to do this on the Nissan Nation production side, and uh, go check out Danny runs that channel now, and lots of fun content over there. Uh, let's see, uh, we got a, we got a lot of Southern Californians in here, Dave. I know, buddy. We got we got Kevin Manet, we got uh, Carlos Elias, uh, Carlos Elias. Uh, we got uh, who was it? The uh, Terrence Mooney, Cronies, bro. Hey, Terrence, let's hit Cronies. Um. Uh, Get on my Instagram or my Facebook and 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 and, uh, and DM. What me, is bro. your Instagram, Listen, Danny? Uh, at Degroot X or uh, Nissan Nation Productions. Hop on my Instagram. Let's grab a let's grab a beer at Crody's, bud. Um, Here's to you. Uh, I, lo- I love uh, meeting up, Danny. If if uh, I hear in August they're doing away with the mask mandates for flying, so I may fly out there, buddy. <gasps> Dude, we, if we get a nice nice, well, I'm uh, gonna so- be seeing you in September. So that's that's true. On Danny's, we, how old are you we'll going to be, Dan? How old are you going to be? I don't know. I don't know. Man, it's 40? 30. 40? 40? Um, but yeah, so uh, anyways. Oh, and by the way, I wanted to say this. If uh, if you're interested in hanging out with me and Dan, come to Went Wind Rock September 20th, I think, through 25th. It's a Nissan event. I don't give a damn who shows up this year. I just want to, one. we're having one big party, kind of, I'm ending this event. And if you want to off-road, come off-road with us. I'll have the Gladiator probably out there, maybe a Bronco, uh, and come hang with us. I think it'll be a, a, a fun time. But uh, let's see. <clears throat> oh, look at Ro! Like three, I'm three blocks from the cronies. Yeah, cronies, cronies, solid, solid, uh, like uh, sports bar, drinks and burgers kind of a place. It's good. It's a good place. Good place. But I need to get back out to SoCal, man. I there. Yeah, some... we we got to find a good excuse. Yeah. Um, it's it's. It, I miss you, Dave. I miss I miss your face in real life, dude. We haven't hung out in so long. Well, and and in truth, Dave, the race truck might be back on its in its in its glory pretty soon. Um, so you gotta you gotta come out and uh, let me give you a real taste of the desert, a, gotta... a real taste of of SoCal bro desert burning life. That's right, man. Uh, but you gotta let me drive it though, right? <laughs> yeah, you can drive it, Dave. <laughs> I've drove that truck on the racetrack, anyways. Do you know that's true? You're you're one of the few that has actually driven the race truck in the last six years. <laughs> Me and you, was, buddy. <laughs> well, you know what? The race truck has only raced on that course, on a street course. <laughs> and so, me and you are the only people that have actually raced the race truck. Yeah. Beating Z's. So, 
outrunning Z's yeah, beating, on a road course. Be, beating beating a, a a 350Z on a uh, on a on a street course in uh, at the um, what was it the auto auto speedway. Yeah, the California. Yeah, that's the speedway. most random fact ever. You know what's funny about that video is every once in a while I'll see comments pop up on that video and it's like, what's that white smoke coming off those tires? I was like, dude, those are freaking MT tires that should not ever be on that road course. <laughs> Danny was burning them tires up going around them corners, man. Um, Kevin, hey, real quick, Kevin, are you getting a Frontier in August? I will drive wherever you're at. Kevin, uh, I will t- I will come. If you get a Frontier in August, I, me and Danny will yeah. both be out there. Yeah, I'll fly Dave out. I'll fly myself out. I don't care. Um, yeah, take all that. Take all that M and P money. I've been. I've been. I've been sitting on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, fly yourself out here. Yeah, the M and P money that that channel makes so much money. Um, oh man, but Danny, so the Jeep, I so far so good. We've had it a week now. Um, I will say this: one thing that pissed me off, buying this thing, I bought it through the Jeep's website. Basically, it was pretty easy to buy it. They they connect you to a dealership that has what you wanted. The dealership I bought the thing from didn't even know they had it, which because it you know why I thought they sold it. It was literally on a truck, and the guy I hit the guy the guy called me from Jeep or Jeep connected it to a dealership, and the guy called me, and uh, he goes, "Oh man, I think we must have sold that." I was like, "Oh no worries, I'll because I wanted that particular color." And literally called me 20 minutes later. He said, you're not going to believe this, but literally the truck pulled up in front of our showroom and was dropping off this snazzle barrier or whatever they call it, truck. Oh, I was that's like, the best part. That's the best part about the truck is that that color is called snazzle barrier, like oh. legitimately called. Dave sent me a window sticker, and I said, Dave, are you really buying a truck called Sna- with a color called snazzle? One, I already hated the color. Two, it was called Snazzleberry. What it's just called Snazzleberry, right? Kevin, I'm gonna hook up a group chat with me, you, and Danny. We've got to we've got to schedule something. First week of August, Danny, I'll fly out there for that. Yeah, um, no, I don't have anything going to the first week of August. Well, now da- do Danny it. says that, and then he's gonna plan 15 adventures, right? Two weeks in a, in a front <laughs> a row. Um, no, hey, but so yeah, so. The truck, it came off the truck, was right in uh, getting, what do they call it, PDEI or whatever, the inspection they yep, do. Yep, pre-delivery inspection, yep. Yeah, so it was in inspection. He sent me a picture of it in inspection, and, and literally they pulled it out for me because they knew I was coming, and the, I had like two other buyers trying to buy the truck out from under me. It's a hot, it is a hot color right now. It's brand new for Jeep. It's a hot color. That that in the market, the market for, for and, and this is a whole other show, the market for new and used vehicles I mean, buying a car is like buying a house these days. And, you know, real estate's crazy. Cars are crazy because, you know, supply and demand, the supply isn't there. You know, we're, we're still feeling the after effects. The supply isn't there like it used to be. So, well, And that's one reason. That's another reason why I bought this thing when I did, because I figured by late, mid, mid-summer, car lots are going to be empty. Uh, they're going to trickle in, and it's not going to be till probably December till the first of the year that, they start getting their well, lots D- back in order. Dave, I, and I and I don't mean to kind of derail the show and push into this, but the the um I, I was talking a little bit about my sh- on on my show about it. Um, that we me and my wife went to look at a Kia Telluride, a Hyundai Palisade, VW Atlas, on a Ford Explorer. We looked at all these different cars. The Kia, yeah, the Kia Telluride was marked up five thousand dollars because they couldn't keep them on the lot. Mm-hmm. The Palisade w- Palisade was not work- marked. God, my speaking is very solid right now. Words. The Hyundai Palisade wasn't marked up, so you got a lot more vehicle for your money. Uh, we we just got an email from like the dealer, or whatever, because we went and looked, and we you know we chatted to them. Those are now marked up five thousand dollars. Yep, I've and seen twenty. I seen twenty thousand dollar markup on a Toyota Rav Four. It's because they can. They're they're running out of vehicles, so they're like, and, yeah. but they're still selling because people are still wanting to buy. Hey, run the show just a minute because I got this is a topic I I need to go grab I, something real quick. Yeah, Dave. Dave's got to go grab um his uh bottle of lotion. Dave always likes to have a bottle of lotion. Well, I say lotion, I mean Vaseline. Dave usually runs a solid big thing of Vaseline. And he just puts a hand under his shirt. Um, while we're, you guys will notice in another up episodes. <laughs> but if you ever see Dave doing a little bit of this, he's rubbing Vaseline all over his chest for after the show. 
Um, so I wanted to make sure you guys understand that he has a little thing. Uh, but but seriously though, um, th- those those midsize three row SUVs, um, I think that we're going to see a really big problem. I have a really good friend um, that runs one of the largest Ford dealerships. Every time I text him about some kind of vehicle, or, you know, one way or the other, he's like, dude. And this, this is like they have they have an entire parking lot at an airport rented out, or, or a couple different lots. They they have some of the largest inventory of any dealership and they have a few now, but they are running out of inventory and that's kind of unheard of for them. Um, so that's going to be a big thing. Um, on top of the fact that I had another buddy who went and bought two new, um, GMC, he bought a Silverado and a, and a, not GMC. He bought a Silverado and a Tahoe and they gave him huge money for his trade-ins. He had a terrain and a Honda civic. Yeah. He got huge money for, um, for both of those vehicles on trade-ins. Um, and so the used market is really wild right now. It's just kind of a weird space. Um, and, and speaking of weird spaces, um, just keep an eye on Dave's hand under his shirt. Um, you can go back and watch the show, Dave, and see what I said about that. Well, I'll, I'll check that out. So, so Dan, you were talking about some of the, um, are, you know, they're marking things up yep. a little bit. Hold, hold so, on, Dave. Sorry. Let me, let me answer Kevin. Uh, yes. Galpin Ford. I'm, I'm, I, I grew up with the, um, with the Bachmans, who are the heirs to the to the Galpin Ford uh, uh, hierarchy, of leading Ford dealerships. Um, so I'm really good friends with uh, Brandon, which is the grandson of uh, Bo Bachman. Anyway, sorry, I wanted right. to answer Kevin on that one. So a lot of the goofiness dealerships do and stuff, and I plan on doing a video on this, but we'll talk about it here anyways. So they laminated the 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 what tag. yeah <laughs> very cool i i mean actually i, I kind of thought it was really cool all uh, right which works for it's me a, it looks like a jeep thing well anyways it's to keep it from falling apart maybe i don't know um, okay so <laughs> the price of this truck was forty seven thousand six twenty five. i don't know if you can see that. in snazzleberry just in, to be clear in snazzleberry, snazzleberry. forty seven thousand so, dollars for a snazzleberry truck uh, so I got, uh, depending on which dealership, some were up to 6000 off on them. But this one here, I got $2,500 off of it from some whatever. I don't know. I, I did, I really, I wasn't going to negotiate too hard because I just, I needed this truck that night. So it is what it is. I got $2,500 off, which new vehicle, like you were saying right now, they're upcharging everything. So Jeep still has a, Gladiator's not as popular as Wrangler. So I knew if I went Gladiator, I could I, I knew there was some room for me there to, to negotiate a little bit. A lot of the, the Wranglers I'm seeing are sixty grand right now. I, I not even Rubicons? Not even Rubicons. Wow. That's so, mind blowing. So so I got this and uh, the guy sent me the deal, text me that here's here's our deal sheet on it. And and I seen something called um all terrain package for a thousand dollars, on on addition to the uh, the negotiated price, and I was like, well, that's weird. But I was like, I'm not gonna, I'm just gonna wait till I get there, and I'm gonna see what the all terrain package is, and so I find it fitting though because it's called all terrain, all terrain package. You can see it there, and I was like, well, that's, that's fitting. That's fitting because all terrain nation, but. The all I so I I got there and I said so what exactly is the all terrain package knowing the truck literally came off of the 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 travel yeah. truck and went to PDI and then they literally parked it out front. So he goes, oh well, we put we put the locking lug nuts on it and uh, we filled the tires with nitrogen. And I looked at this dude like, and what else? He goes, well, that's it. And I said, well, it, and I do not like throwing out I'm a journalist or anything, especially in this situation. I, I do not want to. How about just like I'm not an idiot? Yes. <laughs> well, so so I looked at the guy and I said, here's the thing. I'm not going to negotiate hard with you. That $2,500 you are giving me off because of Jeep's rebate or whatever. I said, I, I'll take that, and I'm, that's it. I'm not going to negotiate with you. I'm the easiest sale that you're going to have tonight. But I said, I'm not paying $1,000 for nitrogen in my tires 
and locking lug nuts because the the cool thing about the locking lug nuts, Dan, I forget where they're. Oh, right there. They're a part of the freaking package already. It literally says, I don't know if y'all can see that. I probably can't. But from the factory, it comes with locking lug nuts for $65 upcharge from Jeep. And so they want to hit me for $1,000 for nitrogen t in my tires and locking lug nuts. I was like, who the F falls for this at all? Like, this is, the, I've seen people. A lot of people. I've seen like a couple hundred dollars for nitrogen, whatever. You know, yeah. these aren't race vehicles. There's no reason for nitrogen. Like, take in the these nitrogen tires. out and put the summer air in. Yeah, Thank yeah. You very much. Um, <laughs> I'm but, not an idiot. <laughs> but I was like, a thousand dollars for locking lug nuts that came with the truck, and supposedly filling the tires with nitrogen, which I guarantee you they didn't do. They put a little green cap on the they they. Because I found one yeah, of the they old put caps. The green cap on it. <laughs> yeah. And I guarantee that's all they did. And so I told the guy, well, like well, I said. Did you did you check? B Warren said that all terrain packages come with door edge guards for the mall parking lots. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> um but I just looked at the guy and I said, Look, man, I said, I I'm a journalist. I'm not a journalist. I said, so I'm calling your bullshit on this. I said, here's the thing. I'm not negotiating on the price, but I said, I'll leave now. I said, I have zero issue. I have no emotional connection to this vehicle. Yeah. I'm I don't not... like Jeeps that much in the first place, right. sir. <laughs> right. I, I just am buying this because I need a vehicle for the show for the next few months. But he he was like, oh, I don't think that's a problem at all. Because he knew I called his bullshit out on it. And it was obviously it wasn't the salesman. It's just what this company yeah, does. Yeah, it just, yeah, it, that's the sticker. And so, therefore, the sales but, is just working the deal. But I like that this was – these were – by the way, these were just sitting in the truck when, when I picked the truck up. So – and there's and the dealership Dave, I bought it from. You, Dave, did it come with – did it come with Crocs? No. With the, maybe the off-road package is Crocs with the back little strap that you have to put on the back of the Crocs. No, sadly. I feel like that's didn't. a requirement. Maybe uh, you should have Snazzleberry matching crop. Well, let me get to the next thing, Dan. I don't know if me and you have talked about this. So I'm looking at the truck. I don't even test drive it. I don't I don't want to test drive it, honestly, because I don't want anything influencing the purchase. I'm buying it because I want to review it, and, and, you know, so be it. So I'm looking through the truck. It looks great. It came. It comes with, like, a uh, WeatherTech mat already. They call them slush mats for Jeep. I'm like, holy hell, that's nice. I'll, I'm super happy about that. I look at the radio or the screen, and there's a chip in it, and not oh, just yeah. not just a chip in it. No, Dave, I had a, I had a question about this. Was this a brand new vehicle, or was, was this used? No, brand new. It literally came oh, off the truck from Jeep. I didn't realize that. Yeah, that makes it. So there's in the their Jeep has a little rubber thing around the uh, the yeah. the monitor. There's a cut. You can see a a cut in that, and a chip in the screen. And of course, obviously, I said, hey. I, this is going to have to be fixed too. Well, yeah. <laughs> so, so the guy, you know, they, they, they take us to the, uh, the back of the house. You have to wait forever because you got to go to financing. Normally in financing, they, um, they, they lay out a few deals for you. Here's what your credit allows you. Yeah. Depending. Yeah. Didn't say a word at all. And I went with whatever they said because I'm going to refinance this with my own credit union. So I, I, I just – if I had to do my credit union, they would have sold the truck out from under me. So I, yeah. lit I literally was in a position where I needed to pick up that truck that night. So no, no, I get to the financing, sign here, 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 and here. And I was like, really? And I, like I said, I went with it because knowing I'm just refinancing this thing anyways. But I was like, are, are you kidding me? Like – didn't offer me terms. Didn't offer me. Here's your monthly payment if for this, this, this. Just sign, sign the documents. Yeah. Thank you. Have I was like, day. I was like, okay. Uh, so when they they brought the vehicle back out after they washed it, looks great at night under the lights. This color looks really good in my opinion. <clears throat> the the salesman who told us he had to leave by eight, he hung around. It was eight forty by the time we left. Show, he hooked the Bluetooth and all what they're supposed to do, you know, kind of the here's how this yeah. works. He rushed out and I was like, OK, so. He go, oh, by the way, he goes, hey, you know, my I get reviews if you, you know, 
yeah, make I, sure I did a good job. Yeah. And, and he was the salesman was super yeah, nice. Yeah. So yesterday, yeah, or two days ago, I got the email for to do their review. So I was honest, not brutally honest, but I was honest. This is how I was treated in the back of the house with your finance, blah blah blah. I get a I get a text message from the salesman yesterday going, "Hey, did I do something wrong?" I was like, "No, why?" He goes, "Well, I got a bad review." Of course, now granted these reviews one ding and anything it's a bad below any anything below 5 stars or whatever yeah. their rating process is is yeah. yeah, I I used to get I used to get extra money on my paycheck as a mechanic if if the reviews were 5 stars or you know, or if it was Anything below five stars, you wouldn't get your, you know, your yeah. your extra money or whatever. So, and right. that's a big deal for them. Oh, of course. But, and the guy texted me, and I just texted him back. Look, back a house didn't offer me any any type of options, um, and just and the dude was really heartbroken about it. But through all this, the guys texted me two times about this this freaking crack screen. Still nothing. I'm like, how hard you guys. Pay. They literally damaged this in PDI. Is when they did it. Got it didn't come from the it, factory. It got damage. damaged at some point in time. Yeah, 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 and and it's not fixed. Right. So, and I'm like, all you have to do is order the radio and the the stupid rubber piece around it, and it's good. Yeah. So yeah. I after that review, I'm I'm I told Kelly tonight. I was like, all right, Monday it's your turn. I was a nice guy. Now it's time to play bad cop. And now, now you now you put in the heavy hitters. Yeah. I know Kelly will light their ass. Oh, up, yeah. That's for sure. Yeah, because Kelly's in quality care. Like she's she knows how you take care of people. And so yeah. I was like, all right, time to bring out the big bat and go to it. But uh, overall well, though Danny, I will say buying from Jeep's website. I wanted to document this and I just didn't have time. I wanted to buy it strictly from their website because a lot of times now you can buy everything and it literally shows yeah, up. Yeah, kind of like f- a drive up and pick yeah. up kind of a No, thing. they literally will drop it off to you. I could have had them oh, just yeah. literally right. drop it off to me. Yeah. But the timing didn't work out well. But uh, I, I'm happy with the purchase. I thought, the, like I said, the $1,000 for fake air was kind of funny. Uh, I called them out on that bullshit. And overall, the dealership was nice. But you could tell they were used to. It's in Franklin, Tennessee, which is where all the stars live here. I I don't. I guess they're just used to people just saying okay to whatever they want to add on to something. But uh, yeah. So that's that's kind of well, where we're at with Jeep right now. I'm, I'm looking. I'm looking forward to seeing how much you end up hating it, because um, it's just a matter of time. So um, I can't what, wait. For why do you think I will? Ha- why do you think I will hate this? It's a Jeep. Yeah, but no. so uh, I really appreciate you oh. uh, taking this taking the bullet for the team here. Speaking of hating, before we wrap this show up, BMW. Oh man! <laughs> yeah, but so, before you get on a rant, Dave, I gotta piss so bad. So I go, want you do to it, do it. Start your BMW rant because I know this is gonna be a long one. All right, so you guys know I bought a BMW 5 Series. Well, Kelly bought a BMW 5 Series. It was a 2012. It had 113,000 miles on it. I warned Kelly. I was like, it's BMW. There's They're some of the best driving cars you'll ever drive. And I mean that. This car drives fantastic. Unlike It's like nothing you've ever drove before. And I know that sounds cliche. A BMW 5 Series is some of the best driving vehicles I've ever been a part of driving. Just fantastic. The layout of this thing, fantastic. It's 2012 model. Still looks new. Fantastic. There's quality issues. There's a couple things probably shouldn't be as worn as um, they are. So we own this car for a week and a half. The battery light comes on. Now, BMW, they're sensitive as hell. Everything, temperature, everything seems to uh, freak them out. Um, so the it's it was like brought up a battery code. And I was like, oh, what? What's this going to cost to get a battery? Well, it's a BMW, so it takes a special battery because it's some weird hybrid system, really. Um, I didn't replace the battery, and the code the code ended up going away on the battery. I even called Danny about the battery because I, Dan, knowing Danny was a former BMW mechanic, I knew he would have some kind of insight into the battery issue. And I was even told by a specialist that uh, a buddy of me and Danny's named Nestor that a uh, Works on B- He loves BMWs. He said, look for this, this, and this. We did a FaceTime video away from the dealership. 
he looked at it and said, here's the typical where they leak, where they do this and that. He's like, it looks good. And, but he lives in Florida. You know, he's, he's looking at it from a thousand miles away. So I warned the wife. I was like, with BMW comes BMW problems. She wanted the vehicle. We, and, it, and for, I forget what it was, 12 grand. Not, not ridiculously priced. Not like I just spent 80 grand on a car. <clears throat> Drove it home. Great. Once again, the battery issue. That was really it. Other than it has a TPMS sensor that keeps going nuts. And it doesn't detect something. I don't know. I, I went and had the batteries checked on the sensors. They all work fine. I've heard there's a radar in the middle of the car that senses out for that that can go bad. Don't care about that. I'll live with it. So a week and a half ago, my wife was taking our daughter to school. And she goes, hey, the car just went into limp mode. I was like, why? She goes, it brought up a uh, overheating issue. And I was like, well, you need to pull that thing over and let's let's figure this out. Well, she ended up, it, it. we only live 15 minutes from my daughter's school, but I think it took her an hour to get home because she kept having to pull over, let it cool down a minute, pull over, let it cool down a minute. She got it home and um, I got looking at the Carfax I had on it. And a year ago, it had a water pump put in it. But Danny, what kind of water pumps do they put into these things? It's it was well, electric water. They they run electric water pumps on those. Yep. So it's not mechanical. And if it was, yeah. So and so and they, they I know, I changed a lot of those water pumps in my day. That's for sure. Buried deep in the middle of this car. So we take it to a company called Eurofix here in in the Nashville area. Pretty reputable place. They uh, they have a couple spots here in Nashville. Uh. $1,600 to replace a water pump. Yeah. And um, then he got it back. He called me yesterday, Dan, and you don't even know about this. He called me back, and he's like, we took it out. Not overheating. Everything's great. I was like, sweet. $1,600. I'm like, Jesus Christ, this car. He goes, by the way, uh, the tensioners are probably going to need to be replaced on it, and the belt's looking a little worn because they're starting to squeal. And I'm like, oh, Christ. Now, it has like two tensioners plus a pulley. I said, well, what's this going to cost me? And I was expecting this. I I literally was expecting like they – it's a BMW. Danny, you know they leak oil. It's $2,000 every time you take it to the shop, Yeah, just so you know. Yeah, pretty much. And so I was like, what's this going to cost me? $700 for a belt to two tensioners and this pulley replaced. And I, I told the guys, like, look, man, I'm not spending that kind of money on I'm, this car's going away. Like, Kelly's, she's already got freaked out about it, realizes, okay, it's a BMW. Let's get rid of this, put it back together, and we'll sell it. So I called the guy, or he called me, and I was mad. And I said, just put it back, just No. So then I called my boy Nestor, who is a BMW guy, and I was like, Nestor, is this guy up and up? He goes, it's really about, I would charge $300 to fix that. He goes, it's it's intensive because you got to move some intercooler piping to get to some. He goes, it's just kind of a pain in the ass, but the parts aren't real expensive. And so Kelly's actually going to Florida where Nestor lives this coming week. And I was like, would the car get to Florida? To let somebody who I, I honestly, with all my life, trust to service that car. Yeah. And at the end, I called the dealership or the, the Eurofix back, and I was like, look, just fix it. Because I told Kelly, it's like, knowing my luck, you get to Atlanta, it'd break. And, and even Nestor said, when these belts break, it can cut oil coolant lines. Like, it, yeah. it, can, it can be a bad thing. So you now, definitely don't want a belt going down. So now I almost have $3,000 in a car that I've owned for two months. And I told Kelly, she was pissed when I told her that I said, Hey, I just told him to fix it. I said, look, I can't sell this car. And every time somebody goes to turn it on or drive it, you hear a squealing. Cause then they're just going to, yeah. they're going to tuck tail and run. And I was like, it is what it is. So, uh, so best driving car I've ever had, Dan. I mean that. The five series is they, they drive amazing. amazing, and I like the only I, I say if, if you're going to drive a BMW, you better be willing to work on it because 
and that's the thing is like parts and you know the, the, it's a premium for labor and it's a premium for parts if you can work on it yourself it's not bad it's not bad yeah oh if it wasn't if the water pump wasn't just buried in the middle of this thing yeah, I w- it, it's it's like it's way underneath so unless you have a lift it's a terrible job right you know but like for me dave dave sent it to me and i was like oh it's not a terrible job and then i'm thinking to myself well it's only a it's only a terrible job if you don't have a lift. And then I'm like, well, Dave's not gonna get underneath this thing. I mean, it's yeah, it's it's not a great job. You know, it wasn't a bad job for me, but that's because I had all the tools and I worked at BMW. You know, uh, by the way, Terrence, I, I worked at Rusneck. I would never work at Steve Thomas. <laughs> Are you kidding <laughs> yeah. us, Steve Thomas? How do you bring that even in? But here? yeah, that you know, that's the thing is is a belts and tensioners you know you could buy it for 150 bucks and put it in yourself um it would just yeah it's just a little bit of a pain in the ass you know and like you know but that's the thing is is a bmw you need to work on it yourself and if you're not comfortable working on it yourself you're gonna spend a ton of money keeping it up repaired and in shape because well, all the parts are gonna be more yeah. expensive the, the people that work on them charge more money because yeah, it's, it's BMW. It's, well, it's a luxury so. vehicle. It re- I mean, I get it, which I warned Kelly about about buying BMW, that th- this was BMW problems. But uh, what sucks is I have a few mods for the thing, some gr- replacement grill parts, dash parts and stuff, that I was going to film some content for. And now I'm like, I just may return it. Now you it hate sh- it? Now, no, I don't hate it. I just I knew what it was going into it, that eventually it yeah. was going to bite us. And yeah. so we literally, when we bought the Jeep, we had no car. I had to take my company. Oh, yeah, yeah. I had to take my company vehicle to go buy the Jeep. I literally, so I bought the Jeep. Kelly drove the Jeep home the 40 miles back to go get it. And I'm kind of a sad puppy. Like, I just bought my new toy. And the girls no, got it. <laughs> the girls got my toy and I want to drive it. I was it. curious about that. I was like, is Kelly going to straight steal your Jeep? Oh, no, she already she has. She literally has. She's. It, I knew it. I knew that was going to happen. Oh, yeah. No, I mean, that's. She went from the ti- she went from the Titan to the BMW. And she's going to be. Just, yeah, I was like, dude, she's going to straight be stealing your Jeep all the time. She has said, though. She has said, Danny, that she's like, this does not handle like the BMW. I was like, no, no shit. Really? It's a Jeep. It's not supposed to. Uh, Kevin Manet, I do have some shoes that matches the uh, the uh, Snazzleberry. I like, I like that he gave you five bucks for your Snazzleberry <laughs> for your water pump. And he called you Snazzleberry. Uh, guys, what's I do, up, Devin Alonghi? I the the super chats go a long way to help fund the channel, so I appreciate that, Kevin. It means a lot. Um, let's see, what's up, Devin? Uh, let's see, that's Terrence. That's else, Danny. Dave? Danny side chat there. Um, let me get to a couple questions. Rob says he had a, a 1998 uh, 325i purchased off lease in 90 in 99 in Dallas for 30k. Uh, yeah, that's a, that's like a E thirty. I mean, that's a that's a pretty old, pretty standard situation with those. Those things will last a long time. You know, the newer you get, the more finicky they get. Kind of. Um, back I told, in the day, it was pretty straightforward stuff. I told Kelly though, I was like, "Look, if you, I get wanting a BMW, but I said the next one, we're just going to do a two year lease or whatever it is, a brand new one, lease it. That way, if just, it breaks, they fix it, yeah, and we move on." Like, don't ever well, expect to Well, you can complain one. about everything and anything and everything, too, about squeaks and rattles. Because that's, I was a squeak and rattle connoisseur. I could fix any squeak and rattle. I had I had an entire drawer dedicated in my toolbox to squeaks and rattles. It had, like, sti- like one side was, like, sticky, and the other side was, like, like, uh, like padding. And so you could put that in between little things that squeaked and rattled. Because the, the, the majority of the things well not the majority i'd say like at least a good core complaints i had was oh this this little noise makes when i go over bumps and you're like oh every car would make it you know but because the bmw owner was the the creme de la creme they didn't want their vehicle making any noises at all and so i was squeaks and rattles all day long for some days well, uh, let's see. B. Warren, uh, rule of thumb, never buy German car over three years old unless you're ready for the repair bills. I would totally agree with that. And I didn't go into this yep. thing. I didn't go into it blind about that. I knew eventually it would bite us in the ass. I just hoped it wasn't two months into the purchase. Uh, so I will do a, uh, a driving impression of that vehicle coming up, which, once again, 
drives it's the best driving sedan i've ever been in ever you better beat on it hard for that review well so oh dan danny they also when it was under it they were like oh yeah your uh, oil pan gasket's starting to leak just a little bit and this and that it's leaking which that's bullshit i i've read some things it's pretty common on some of these but he goes it's not he's not trying to sell me on it he was like if you were going to keep this car long term it would stuff you'd look at but and then he wanted to service the transfer case because it is an all-wheel drive. And I was like, nah, you know what? I'm probably good on yeah. that. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Overlay. Blind man overlay yeah. when I had a I'm going to get rid of it and let somebody else deal with it. Yep. Uh, Danny, did you buy uh, – did Danny – Terrence asked, Danny, did you buy no, a Bronco? I, Dave, Dave put his money in on the Bronco. Dave's buying the Bronco. Bronco. I'm, I'm a Nissan guy still. Uh, I got a Nissan race truck in my garage, desert race truck. And then I have a Frontier, and then we have an Armada as well. So I'm all I'm all Nissan up right now. Yeah, well, we all make those mistakes, Dan. And if you if you if you want to follow the Nissan Nation Productions channel, you can hop on over there. Me and Dave, uh, me and then Dave hops in uh, um, from time to time. Um, we we do a bunch of Nissan stuff on, over on that channel. And if you're interested in my race truck and a lot of my racing and and off-road adventures and stuff. The Groot X is uh, my personal channel. I do a bunch of stuff on there. So, Terrence, if you're if you're interested in, in seeing a local guy doing things, off-road things with Nissan trucks, check that out. That's D A G R O O T X. There you Just go. And Danny, where can out. they find you on the socials? Same thing on Instagram. The Groot X on Instagram. Just hit me there. If you ever want to DM me or PM me. I- I reply to everybody. Well, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a it, personable fella. And as you can hear, he can't afford the good internet. So uh, uh, Megatron Dan is here to stay. So there you guys have it. <laughs> we um, there is a show, Danny. That's almost an almost an hour forty uh, that we just did there. Um, good times. Thanks. I've got like I said, I've got some. I bought the Jeep to review it. I'm going to do a bunch of cool, just normal. I've got a miles per gallon review. I'm going to do on it. I'm going to do, Danny, I'm going to do a miles per gallon with the top on, and I'm going to do a miles per gallon with the top off, because nobody ever, you never see anybody test these things with the tops off, and will it be different? Is that going to be for you or the Jeep? For the Jeep. No, I I, oh. I, I always ride dirty, buddy. Yeah. I always ride dirty. Less, We're in Tennessee, more, bro. More for the Jeep. We get our wife beaters on here in Tennessee, and we just go for it. <laughs> Drive down to the metalizer. <laughs> <laughs> oh man dog breath thank you that uh so bronco guys i i still love broncos i've taken a lot of heat from bronco guy for whatever reason they this is i've always said this is not a bronco channel this is the all-terrain nation we do it all from cars trucks i don't care uh but i know i do appreciate bronco guys passion for it and i have a lot more bronco content coming so uh no i'm not putting the windshield down be warned that seems like a pain pain in the ass oh danny Quick teaser, uh, Ford outdid Bronco or Ford Bronco outdid Wrangler taking the doors off. Guaranteed, the taking the doors off of this Bronco are a pain in the effing ass. Really? Yeah, yeah. It's 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 not as fun as you would uh, uh think of it. Uh, Carlos, thank you so much for that nine ninety nine for my oil gasket. <laughs> <laughs> nice, Carlos. I do appreciate that. Man. Oil hey, you, you seem to be getting a lot of BMW sympathy money on this show. <laughs> yeah, I guess so, man. That's how you get some super chats. You just talk BMW, huh? <laughs> oh man. So, Danny, anything coming up for you before we we cut out? Yeah. Yeah. We gotta get Danny some better internet. All uh, right, nothing special. Um, just more more race truck content. Are we live again? We are live. Okay, uh, am I back? You are back, sir. <laughs> so race tr- uh, race I trucks. Know I know you just had a video you dropped, which is really cool. Uh, Spencer Lowe's. Uh, yeah, trucks. there's actually a really cool um, video. I went I went and checked out. Um, a really badass old Nissan race truck that got completely restored. Um, a guy that's rebuilding old class seven race trucks. Um, his name's Dana Degg. Um, he actually just rebuilt an Ivan Stewart truck that, uh, that I'd like to go check out as well, but check that out on the Nissan, our Nissan nation productions channel. 
Um, it's got some cool Spencer Low history. Um, and yeah, we got a little walk around on it and then some stuff from when they actually raced it in Nora um, just about a month ago or so. So yeah, uh, keep it on the channel. Um, you know, Dave hops over there and, and we chat a little bit about Nissan stuff over there. Even if you're not a Nissan fan, there's some cool race stuff. Um, and then again, my channel, um, building race truck. Ho hopefully a uh, new transmission <laughs> should be in it pretty soon. Be we'll Warren, be doing fun stuff. Danny B. Warren said your internet is about as reliable as a used BMW. <laughs> All right, guys, so uh, more content on the way Monday. So from all things two-wheel drive, four-wheel drive, you know the drill. It does not matter what you drive because this is your Nissan Nation, and I'm your host, David Boyd, alongside my co-host, Daniel Big Deal Groters. And what are we, Danny? Nissan Nation, Dave? Did I say Nissan? All you got to do it. <laughs> you slipped into the old Damn it, role. man. We, I knew we it, fall in this like a glove. So from this all things two-wheel drive, four-wheel drive, it does not matter what you drive because this is your all-terrain nation. There you go. Your, not be warns. This is your all-terrain nation. And I'm your host, David Boyden. What are we, Danny? We're out. Peace, everybody. 